Well, folks, it's that time of the year once again, where I vibe check on animated projects for the upcoming year. Oh, 2024. I hope you go easier on us compared to 2023, especially for the animation industry. Um, strikes, series and movies getting unceremoniously canceled for tax write-offs, and of course, the looming threat of AI replacing no, no, artists. No, 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 no. <laughs> Seriously, uh, the industry took quite a few blows on the chin, but here's hoping 2024 is a step in the right direction. But before we get into it, keep in mind, the majority of the topics here will fall under the umbrella of Western animation. Now, there will be some overlap, but if you came to this video to hear what anime will be dropping in 2024, well, you're watching the wrong video. No, sir, we'll be talking about oh, Despicable Me 4 instead. God help me. Now, I do aim to talk about some indie animated projects, though only briefly because I have a full-on video essay about indie animation dropping later in January. So for those who want their indie fix, give me a few weeks, it's on its way. There are a lot of talented folks who have some incredible projects in the works, but I want to make sure I can give them the focus they deserve. So make sure to stick around to the end of the video for a teaser of what's to come. And real quick, before we kick things off, ad time. I wanna give a shout out to this video sponsor, Emmy. I've mentioned before that I do keto, or at least lazy keto, in the effort of trying to cut back on sugar and carbs. That being said, I really miss certain foods, especially noodles, but that's where Emmy comes to the rescue. I wish I could show you the package they sent me, but I only have like one left because I ate the rest before doing this ad. Take that for the genuine recommendation that it is. Emmy is the tastiest way to cut carbs from your diet, so you can get your noodle fix without the guilt and food coma. Each pack of Emmy has 21 grams of protein and six gram net carbs, plus six chef-crafted vegan flavors. There's the black garlic chicken, there's the spicy beef, and then there's the creamy chicken, to name a few. Creamy chicken is my personal favorite. Like I said, uh, my Emmy was gone within a few days of me getting it. On top of that, Emmy has 300 calories and 85% less net carbs than normal instant ramen. So I don't have to feel guilty anymore about munching on something I love. Again, it is so nice to be eating noodles. I boil my nudes, not those. I chop up some veggies and meat. I toss in the seasoning and crack an egg on the top. Boom, we're in business. You can't beat it. And I've got the hookup, baby. Go to emmyeats.com slash saberspark or click the link in the description down below to get 15% off your order. That is emmyeats.com slash saberspark to get 15% off. Emmy also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's literally risk-free. Go hit them up today. And now, back to the video. All right, let's get things started with movies. And who more fitting to begin this conversation with than the magical behemoth itself, Disney. After having such a financially disastrous 2023, Disney definitely has their work cut out for them. Their animation slate reflects this, with 2024 shaping up to be their least impressive roster out of any other major studio. Heck, if I lost a billion dollars releasing the same stale, repetitive movies in one year, then yeah, I'd probably hold off too. This is their opportunity to take the L, get back to basics, and honestly, reevaluate what Disney actually stands for. I'm currently working on a video about what's ruining Disney, so for those who want a deep dive on the topic, it's coming, all right? Make sure to subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out for that one because, ooh, it's gonna be a big one. Just like during the pandemic, Pixar will be the ones to bail Disney out this year, with Inside Out 2 premiering on June 14th. Now, I like the original film well enough, though I'm not totally sold here on Anxiety's character design for the sequel. It looks odd. But since their newest story seems focused on teenage insecurities and struggling to fit in, I'm optimistic about this one. The difficulties of surviving puberty are a universal concept and it'll be a fun direction to take the other emotions in. Also, I'm happy to report that the Pixar films that got us through the pandemic are finally getting their time on the big screen. Saul, Turning Red, and Luca all have nationwide release dates coming out early in the year. With the first one being Saul on January 12th, Turning Red on the 9th of February, and Luca on March 22nd. 
Now, while this may be a calculated move by Disney to recoup some of their losses, I couldn't be happier for the production crew at Pixar finally getting their work on the big screen and hopefully getting folks back into theaters. Now, I'll definitely be out there to see Turning Red in all of its colorful, wacky glory. Back at Disney, their prequel film Mufasa, The Lion King, is set to come out in December 20th of 2024. Man, talk about beating a dead lion. Huh. I meant horse. Or is it a wildebeest? Nah, it's a lion. Like, like, I knew a sequel was inevitable for this one. Like, with the 2019 live-action remake making freaking $1.6 billion at the box office. But since we don't have a teaser trailer at this point, I can't really weigh in on it aside from noting the story is supposed to be about Mufasa's origins before he became the king of the Pride Lands. Uh, now, I wasn't a fan of the shot-for-shot -shot remake the first time, so I'm not really expecting good things from this one. Especially when Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, was right there. It has great music, it's aged surprisingly well for a sequel. Like, come on, Disney, just give the furs what they want. Nobody gets hurt. Where's my Kovu? Yeah, those who know. Well, since Disney's releases seem to be pretty mid, let's see what other studios have to offer. Down at Illumination Station, Despicable Me 4 has its current release date as July 4th. USA, USA. As of writing this, there hasn't been a teaser or trailer released yet. But unless they're like strapping Bob to a firework over an aircraft carrier, it's gonna be a hard pass for me on this one. Like, I'm sure it'll be another safe, boring, irritating romp that'll make a ton of money just to distract young kids and provide meme fodder for Facebook moms. It's a rough job, but frankly, I don't really expect anything better from Illumination. Now, DreamWorks has a few coming out. First with their release of Orion and the Dark. Premiering on Netflix on February 2nd, it follows the story of Orion, voiced by Jacob Tremblay, a boy who's terrified of the dark and recruited to follow him and a group of night guardians to overcome his fears. The screenplay was adapted by Charlie Kaufman, yes, that one, from a book written by author Emma Yarlett. It seems to have a goofy but heartfelt vibe, with the dark, voiced by Paul Walter Hauser, acting as a big brother kind of spirit guide to Orion. I hope I said your name right. Following that, Kung Fu Panda 4 will be arriving in theaters on March 8th. This time, Poe is handing off the mantle of Dragon Warrior onto a new protege to defeat a shape-shifting chameleon witch voiced by Viola Davis. This movie has already gotten a surprising amount of dumb controversy from folks online. Yeah, Twitter, who would have guessed? With folks complaining about Zen, the new Fox character voiced by Aquafina. Now, I, I get the complaints, but I'm gonna hold back my true reservations until I, you know, watch the film. You don't have to like her voice. But the character design, I think it's just, you know, it's fine. It's fine, guys. It could be better, but it's definitely not worth cyberbullying the artist who worked on the film over. So, yeah, stop that. That's not okay. Personally, I'm really excited to see where they take this one with the fight sequences, as I'm sure they'll include some incredible transformation during combat. Also, there are some baddies who are supposed to be back for this one, so, hey, count me in. Not those kinds of baddies. Or maybe I do mean that. 2024 is proving to be a pivotal year for DreamWorks as a company. Based on an article from Cartoon Brew, huh, ew, uh, DreamWorks is outsourcing their feature animation from being solely in-house to other satellite studios starting in 2025. One of these studios is Sony Imageworks. Though they do the majority of Sony's animations productions, like Spider-Verse and Hotel Transylvania, they've also done affiliate animation on Netflix films like The Sea Beast and Over the Moon, and Warner Brother films like Smallfoot and Storks. The upper management claims it's an attempt to cut costs by 20% and splitting the asset building and production between themselves and Imageworks. These cost-cutting measures are almost certainly a result of lost box office returns during the pandemic. Streaming brings in a fair amount of money, but the constant delays, cancellations, and overall convenience of streaming still hasn't gotten audiences back out to theaters. Life is expensive enough as it is right now, but trying to get a nuclear family to go to the movies has become an unnecessary luxury, mostly because they can just like, you know, wait a month or so for it to hit streaming at a fraction of the cost, which many people are more willing to do now. I'm not crazy about them cutting contract jobs in the process, since layoffs are a constant living nightmare in the industry. 
but I am curious if this will impact the quality of their films in the meantime. Guess we'll have to wait and see on that front. Next, there's Warner Brothers. Oh, dear lord, where do I even start with them? This past year has had the studio in a massive freefall with David Zaslav, curse his name, and his cronies holding on to the only parachutes. They just cannot stop making awful decisions. And here's hoping 2024 is the massive kick in the butt they need to get their act together. But for the time being, this is what we have to look forward to. Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths is coming to digital platforms on January 8th. Now, I'm not like exactly the biggest superhero fan. Like the, the fatigue is very real for me. But if you dig on multiverses, this one might be up your alley. Go check it out. Additionally, there's a Watchmen animated movie due to come out sometime in 2024. I wish I had more information to share with you on this one, but there isn't much online for it right now outside of the announcement. I loved the atmosphere of the comics, but we'll have to see how this R-rated animated film holds up against Zack Snyder's controversial film and the HBO adapted series. The Looney Tunes deserve way better treatment than being raked across the coals by Warner Brothers Discovery. While this massive shitstorm of Coyote vs. Acme is still an ongoing issue, it's not the only project that's stuck in limbo due to their carelessness. The Day the Earth Blew Up is an anomaly in itself. Being a traditionally animated full-length Looney Tunes movie with an original story and a landscape dominated by CGI. There's no specific release date for it yet, but it's currently estimated to come out in late spring, early summer. Fingers crossed on that one. For their last production of the year, we have The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim to look forward to on December 13th. For those who don't know, I am a massive Lord of the Rings fan, and I am seriously excited for this one. It's a prequel telling the origin of Helm's Deep, and it's founding by Helm Hammerhead, the King of Rohan. Uh, better still, I believe it's supposed to be an anime directed by Kinji Kamiyama who previously wrote and directed the Napping Princess and the Blade Runner Black Lotus series. I wish there was a trailer to show you for it, but man, I am so psyched for this one. Like one of my most anticipated things leading into next year. Also Dune. I know it's not animated, but I cannot wait for Dune Part 2. That's like my most hyped thing for next year. Now, into one of the weirder sections of what's ahead, we get to the releases for Paramount and Nickelodeon. First up on the slate is The Tiger's Apprentice, set to release February 2nd on Paramount+. Plus. This one has a surprisingly weird history. It's originally based on a 2003 children's novel series by author Lawrence Yep. Yeah, Lawrence Yep. Yep. Okay. But it's actually been in development since late 2008 as a live-action film for Cartoon Network. Yeah, you know, during that whole awful see-in-real phase they had? Yeah, let's never talk about that. The project was canceled by Cartoon Network and was stuck in development hell until Paramount picked up the animated adaptation rights in spring of 2019. After some back and forth production delays, they secured a predominantly Asian voice cast, including Lucy Liu, Michelle Yeoh, and Henry Golding. This new CGI animated version was supposed to come out in February 2022, but it kept getting pushed back to the point they actually scrapped giving it a theatrical release in September 2023. Talk about rotten luck. So, now it's just coming out on Paramount Plus, just in time for the Chinese New Year. Will it be worth the wait? Or is it doomed to be an Animorphs meets the Chinese Zodiac hodgepodge? Eh, who knows? But at least now we can figure that out for ourselves by checking it out. Next up is IF, a live-action CGI hybrid film written and directed by actor John Krasinski, best known for playing Jim Halpert on The Office and previously directing the Quiet Place movies. With his co-producer and acting lead, Ryan Reynolds, If follows a story of a girl named B, discovering she can see imaginary friends. I, the, the premise seems fun, with more than a few people online understandably comparing it to Foster's home for imaginary friends. But I'm actually pretty impressed by how nice the texturing, lighting, and mixing of model styles looks with the live action performers. Uh, the lead friend has a youth pastor meets grimace kind of vibe. But this one doesn't explicitly seem to want to murder teenagers, which is a definite plus. It's set to come out on May 17th, so I think I'll keep an eye out for this one. Following that, we have Transformers 1, due to be released on September 13th. 
It's been in and out of development hell since like 2015, involving an expansion of the story of Cybertron. Now I know very little about Transformers as a property, but if you're looking for a star-studded cast about robots, this will probably be a good time for you. Then we have Sonic the Hedgehog 3, coming out on December 20th, just like the Lion King prequel. Who will step up and reign supreme at the box office? Sonic fans or, or Disney adults, you decide America. I'm cautiously optimistic about this one, considering how much better the second film was over the first. The time spent changing out the original model of Sonic was well worth it, and they had the box office records to prove it. This installment also includes fan favorite character, Shadow the Hedgehog. His voice actor has been under wraps from the studio to build up the hype, but I'm hoping they will opt out for Keanu Reeves or Adam Driver personally. Also give him a gun. Last but not least is Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie. The latest iteration of the SpongeBob cinematic universe due to be released on Netflix, but with no set release date. The story follows Sandy and SpongeBob journeying to a mythic land called Texas to reunite with her family and save Bikini Bottom from a dastardly villain. I guess it's kind of nice that they're giving Sandy more of a spotlight, but also kind of annoying that the filmmakers don't believe she has enough appeal on her own to lead the film without SpongeBob tagging along. Maybe just, you know, let her have her own thing, guys? No? No, the yellow square has to be there. We know what's up. Okay, next up is Sony. This one is the most erratic mixed bag of the year. Covering the entire age spectrum from young kids to rated R adult fare. First off, their most anticipated and safest release, the Garfield movie, opening in theaters on May 24th. Now, despite being the first animated feature for Alcon Entertainment, it's being directed by animation veteran Mark Dindle. Now, he's the same director of such great films as Cats Don't Dance and The Emperor's New Groove. And also like one terrible movie called, uh, yeah, Chicken Little. <laughs> Let's hope we can meet it somewhere in the middle as the plot itself seems pretty formulaic to me. It's both the origin story of how Garfield, voiced by Chris Pratt, met his owner John Arbuckle, along with reuniting with his father, Vic voiced by Samuel L. Jackson. Also, hello, native advertising with Olive Garden. It's been a few years, old chum, but I guess we still have to suffer you, huh? But if you're looking for something geared towards younger audiences, there's Harold and the Purple Crayon, due to be released on August 2nd. Based on the classic 1955 picture book, the film has been in development hell since the early 2010s and is finally coming out to theaters to tell the story of a young boy and his magical adventures using a crayon to expand his environment. Lastly, we have Fixed, an adult-oriented and R-rated hand-drawn film written and directed by Gendy Tartakovsky. It's not just a raunchy comedy about a dog, voiced by Adam Devine, and his last night with his, uh, family jewels before getting neutered the next morning. Well, I mean, it is that. But Gindy wrote it as a spiritual successor to films like The 40-Year-Old Virgin and Knocked Up, meaning there's a heartfelt core buried under all those sex jokes. At least I hope so. Come on. I don't need a Ginding, all right? We got to stop that. But if you're not willing to venture out to a movie theater, there's a ton to look forward to on Netflix. Now, keep in mind, I don't have release dates for most of these since Netflix doesn't usually announce them for every project, but I still wanted to bring some attention to them. All right, we good? Let's get into it. One that really intrigued me was In Your Dreams. Following two siblings who venture into a dream world and bargain with the Sandman to save their parents' marriage. Honestly, it sounds pretty refreshing for a film plot, so sure, why not? Uh, relative to the time of uploading this video, Christmas is over. But we will have a new special to check out this time next year. It's called That Christmas and examines a few holiday stories of romance and personal connections between family and friends. It's being directed by character animator Simon Otto, who cut his teeth working on Love, Death, and Robots, so I'm curious to see where he takes this kind of festive concept. Now, if you're looking for something a lot weirder, then look no further than Thelma the Unicorn. She's a regular pony who wants to make it as a popular musician, like think Jim, but with hooves. But to become rich and famous, she makes a deal to become a unicorn and experiences the trappings of getting everything you wanted. I'm honestly super excited for this one, as it combines the directors of Unikitty and Napoleon Dynamite into one cotton candy colored cartoon. 
Need more action? Ultraman Rising has you covered! This stylish and visually striking CGI anime has a goofy sense of humor based on the trailer. Whether it can please the pickiest of Ultraman fans though, eh, we'll have to wait and find out. There's also this cute and vibrant new release from Skydance Animation titled Spellbound. In it, a young girl named Elian has to break a spell dividing her kingdom apart. Uh, now being a pandemic production, the animation was done remotely to limit exposure and features a screenplay by Linda Wolverton, the same screenplay writer for the original Beauty and the Beast film. After the plasticine clay shortage of 2023, all hope had seemed lost for Aardman as a production company. But luckily, more of that good stuff was recovered, and a new Wallace and Gromit film is set to release in 2024. Now, we don't have a title for it yet, but a rough synopsis details an over-reliance on technology affecting Wallace and Gromit stepping up to help him defeat it. Now for you Witcher fans out there, another animated film is coming out in late 2024. It's called Sirens of the Deep and features animation by the supremely talented studio Murr, the same studio used by Voltron, My Adventures with Superman, and The Legends of Korra. Now, before we get into TV shows, and trust me, there's going to be a ton of them, I'll get into a few more stragglers. Uh, projects that are kind of outliers from other studios, but there's still something worth reporting with them. Okay, admittedly, not a great start here. We, we got Johnny Puff Secret Mission, and it's a very cheap and lazy looking sequel to Arctic Dogs and the Puffins franchise featuring the voice of Johnny Depp. Yeah, you never heard of him? Yeah, I mean, either, and I, and I don't know who that is. But if you're looking for great value minions on ice, then this is pretty much what to expect. Also, is it me or does the announcer in the trailer sound like an AI bot? Johnny Puff, Secret Mission. Like, I can't shake that feeling. That's something's off there. Well, it's been seven long years, but Paddington is finally back, baby. The lovable Peruvian bear and his adoptive English family take a trip to South America together before chaos ensues. I'll be checking this one out after it premieres on November 8th. Although, technically, it comes out in America in January of 2025, just like the first two. If you're looking for a smaller but still likable mammal story, the popular kids fiction character, Geronimo Stilton, is making his mark in the world of movies. Set to be directed by David Soren, who also worked on Captain Underpants, Turbo, and the movie Paramount Doesn't Want You to Know Exist, Under the Boardwalk. Well, the film has no set release date. But hey, uh, Stilton is a favorite character for tons of young readers stateside and around the world. So, you know, I guess they'll be happy to see it when it comes out. Next, we've got Trouble, a feature spearheaded by actor Danny McBride. It's about Jax, a 13-year-old boy who gets sucked into a parallel world with his family and how to grapple with self-forgiveness and friendship. And yeah, uh, remember how Winnie the Pooh entered the U.S. public domain a few years ago? And there was like that really cringy horror movie that came out earlier this year? Well, forget that mess. There's an animated origin story being developed by Baboon Animation and IQI Media that should hopefully put some more prestige on the name Pooh. <laughs> as much as you can, that is. It's being developed by former members of DreamWorks, including director John Reynolds and writer Mike DeSave. No trailer yet, but they're hoping it'll perform well enough to release a TV series shortly afterwards. And now for something completely different. Next, we have the series and shows. Let's kick things off with Disney. As bad as Disney's last year was for animated films, let's take a look at what they have in store for TV and Disney+. Plus. Right off the bat, we have Primos, uh, aka Cousins in English, a series created by Natasha Klein involving a 10-year-old Mexican-American girl and her 12 cousins staying with her family over the summer. And back in June of this year, uh, the studio released the theme song as a trailer, but people completely freaked out online, claiming it depicted negative stereotypes and contained broken Spanish. Uh, so I saw the trailer, and after reviewing statements from Natasha Klein grappling with her Mexican-American heritage as a kid inspiring the show, it seems a lot of things got lost in translation. Like, <laughs> literally, there were terms and names that were used in the theme song which are relatively innocuous in the U.S., but are highly offensive in Latin American countries, where most of the angry comments were coming from. So yeah, they really should have looked into that one more before committing to it, but you know, oh well. Despite these issues, the series does not seem to have bad intentions, and there's not enough context available from one sequence to really warrant this bad of a reaction to me. 
but the damage was done and Disney delayed the premiere, pushing it into 2024 instead. And now for something completely different. There's Stugo, a series by Ryan Gillis about six middle school kids roped into attending a, a bogus academic summer camp managed by a mad scientist. It's what happens when the indoor kids are forced into the woods with more than a few weird creatures along the way. No release date, but I dig the designs. In a joint venture by Disney and Britain's Kugali Media, we have the show Iwaju, or The Future, a long-form series about class struggles in a futuristic Nigerian city. It is not related to Black Panther before you ask, but I really like the contrasting environments, and I'm really curious to see how this one plays out on Disney+. Plus. Now, if you are looking for more superheroes, X-Men 97 is due to come out next year too. It's a revival of the original hit 1990 series, right down to having some of the original voice actors return. And it's the first X-Men project by Marvel after getting the rights to the characters back from Fox during their merger with Disney. And one of the more surprising announcements, Pixar has their own series debuting. I know, I was kind of surprised they didn't have one before now. Well, I guess there's monsters like at work, but that's more of a short series. It's called Win or Lose and follows a middle school co-ed baseball team and their rise up the ranks to a championship game. Wait, is Monsters at Work? Oh, hold on, maybe that is a series. Eh, well, an additional series. I digress. Interestingly, it's eight episodes long, with each one following the perspective of a different kid on the team experiencing the same events. I, I, I dig that, that's cool. Now, for Fox, there's only one new series, and it's for all the John Hamm fans out there. Only now he's got a mustache, a pot belly, and disturbingly long legs. You know, everything you love about John Hamm. Grimsburg debut is on January 7th about a detective with one-liners and a sordid town full of crime. We've got a few coming out for Nickelodeon too. Max and the Midnights is a fantasy show based on a book about Max, a 10-year-old girl who wants to become a knight with their group of friends in the Middle Ages kingdom of Bijovia. Along with that is Rock, Paper, Scissors, involving a group of silly friends with attitude. No release dates for either of them. To my complete surprise, and let's be honest here, absolute horror, there are a ton of new animated shows coming out from Warner Brothers Discovery, which is crazy considering the massive piles of dead and canceled shows left in their wake from this past year. I, I don't have any release dates for this, which completely checks out since who knows what kind of trouble Warner Brothers will get into this year, but I hope that these shows make it to air and don't have to pay the consequences. There's a Suicide Squad Isekai anime. The animation is nice, but not gonna lie, I'm just too burnt out from comic book properties to really care. Another series called Invincible Fight Girl did grab my eye though. It's an action comedy based in a world full of wrestlers and one girl named Andy who wants to become the best wrestler ever with the help of her found family. Following that, we have uh, Ayuna, Child of Wonder, a series from Lions Forge Animation. It's a series based on a graphic novel involving the magic and ancient folklore of Yoru Baland. The kingdom heavily draws on Nigerian culture, which is an interesting change of pace and a spotlight on the African animation industry. I'm here for it. Next, there's Batu, a musical comedy series about a teenage group of dancers living in Chicago and their love of hiplet, a combination of hip hop and ballet. Hiplay? <laughs> hiplet? Hiplay. Uh, this particular concept is very unique, and I'm really excited to get a first look at it when the trailer drops. Now, if there's a big gumball shaped hole in your heart, look out because they're giving it the Steven Universe treatment in 2024. Uh, via a movie and a new show. The cult classic series is getting a reboot as one of the first projects for Hanna-Barbera Studios Europe division. Uh, also, Rick and Morty is getting a full-blown anime series. It started off as a series of short films during the pandemic is becoming its own full anime, complete with Japanese voice actors and the animation done by Sola Entertainment, Telecom Animation Film Co., and of course, William Street. Keeping up the violence, we've got Creature Commandos, based on the DC comic series of the same name. It's about a black ops team of monsters, with all seven of the announced episodes being written by executive producer James Gunn. I can definitely see the parallels of why he'd want to be interested in working on a project like this, coming from Guardians of the Galaxy. 
Last but not least, Kite Man from the DC Harley Quinn series is getting his own spinoff. <laughs> it's titled Kite Man, hell yeah. You know, the original show was fun enough, but I'm pretty skeptical if he can actually carry his own featured storyline for longer than a season. You know, he's a, he's a joke character just like Bane, but I don't know what there really is to expand on with this one. For 2024, Netflix seems to be mostly be going with the adult anime and video game route. Uh, up top, we have Exploding Kittens, a series by webcomic creator The Oatmeal and based on the highly popular card game. It's been in development for four years, but no specific dates have been released just yet. If you're not a cat person, there's Jurassic Park Chaos Theory, a sequel and spinoff of Camp Cretaceous. I have a weakness for Devil May Cry as a franchise, and this upcoming series looks pretty awesome, especially since it's being produced by Studio Mer. Between this and Sirens of the Deep, Studio Mer has video game fans covered. Zack Snyder made a space opera called Rebel Moon? Huh? Okay. Uh, and it's getting a sequel like four months after premiering because they shot them back to back Dune style? <laughs> sure, why not? It's happening anyway on April 19th. Lastly, we've got Tomb Raider, The Legend of Lara Croft, an anime series taking place in the five year gap between the uh, 2013 trilogy reboot and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The animation's pretty slick, being handled by the Austin, Texas based powerhouse animation studios with Legendary Television producing it. Moving on to another streaming service, we arrive at Prime Video, ranging from great to, wait, what? Why is it even a thing? By far, their most hyped up and eagerly anticipated premiere is Has Been Hotel, coming out on January 19th. After nearly five years in development from the original release of the pilot, I cannot wait to see what the Spindle Horse team has been working on with A24's guidance. Uh, don't worry, I'll be doing an in-depth review on this one as soon as it comes out, so keep an eye out for that one. In Dear Lord, Why Is This Happening News, Sausage Party is back, but this time with a TV series called Foodtopia. I'm, I'm kind of blown away that they're even making it, considering how fiercely public the backlash was against Nitrogen Studios in 2016. In case you don't remember, I'll give you a quick summary. Using a legal loophole, they allegedly forced the animation team to work unpaid overtime or risk being uncredited or blacklisted, or both, for speaking up. Things got so bad that the animators even went to British Columbia Employment Standards Branch and filed a legal complaint demanding compensation for their time. It took three years, but thankfully, the workers won the dispute and got their overtime payment in 2019. So yeah, uh, uh, screw this pile of garbage, definitely a pass from me. Uh, closing out the TV section, we somehow have Angry Birds Mystery Island, a series based around the hatchling kid characters and their adventures. Guys, it's 2023. The original game is over 15 years old. Is this franchise even relevant anymore? I think it's time to let these flightless birds go extinct. Okay, these last two streaming options aren't exactly on major networks, but I better bring them up anyway. Based on the sci-fi video game epic, Ark, the animated series, boasts gorgeous animation, futuristic tribes at war who coexist with dinosaurs. And yes, they have little saddles for riding into battle, and I'm so here for it. The cast looks incredible, but the platform it's launching on hasn't been announced publicly yet. And last, and yes, definitely least, The Daily Wire is putting out yet another Family Guy clone titled Mr. Burcham on their streaming service, Daily Wire Plus. Funded by sentient ventriloquist dummy Ben Shapiro, the series is based on a recurring character from Adam Carolla's KROQ radio show that was also used on Crank Anchors. The cast includes a number of notable conservative pundits and comedians, but after viewing the trailer, yeah, the writing is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Lots of anti-woke, snowflake-hating nonsense that's way more at home on your uncle's Facebook page. But hey, there's a market for everything, and it's happening whether we like it or not. Whew, that was a ton to get through, but we're not quite out of the woods yet. Now we know what the big wigs are up to, but how about our online creators? Uh, since we're currently in a renaissance of indie projects made by passionate creators, it only seems fitting to give them their moment in the sun too, right? Uh, especially to lower profile creators who are working tirelessly to get enough funding for their work. If you're intrigued by any of these projects, please check the description you know, or the community tab linked in the description uh, for a link to their socials and crowdfunding websites. 
Also, a big shout out to the Indie Animation Network's Twitter, where I found all of these new projects to share with you today. There's no way I would have known about even half of these projects without their tireless dedication to promoting rising creators, so please go check them out and support them yourself. That being said, let's raise some awareness about these exciting new projects and help them reach their funding goals. Up top, we have to talk about the runaway hit of 2023 and the most viewed indie animation pilot of all time on YouTube, The Amazing Digital Circus. After a staggering response from viewers all over the world, Gooseworks and her team are hard at work making new episodes due to air later in 2024. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel too, as I'll be interviewing Goose herself, along with the CEO of Glitch Productions, Kevin, uh, later on in the new year. And for the rest of this section, I'm going to just say the titles, since going into depth with each one and every one would be a very long task. And I want to save that for my indie animation video, which is again coming out later in January. On that note, let's go down the list. Lumi and the Great Big Galaxy, Atlas and the Stars, No XP, Captain Zero, Parvi, Ramshackle, The Evil Little Thing, Circus of Wishes, Defenders of Elodia, Farfetched, Alistair and Melody, The World's Divide, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Baphomet Ostoria, Satina, Enclidus V, I hope I said your name right, Dungeon Flippers, Swift Spark and the Defense Five, Hey, Tally Ho, Zack in Time, Port by the Sea, Heroes of Tomorrow, The Howling Hoods, Project Parasomnia, Morningstar, Night Grim, Will of Monsters, Legend Centora, among the others, and finally, Revamped. And that, folks, is our tentative lineup for 2024. Undoubtedly, there will most likely be some delays, and I would not be surprised if a few things I've mentioned in this video are rolled to 2025. Lord knows, Hasbun Hotel had evaded me for years, but that all being said, I'm incredibly excited for 2024, mainly for the indie animated projects alone. Now, something special is happening right now, and I think it's a powder keg ready to explode. I'll talk more about this topic later in January. Also, I have plans to give shoutouts to indie projects at the end of my main videos starting next year in an effort to use my platform to better promote budding creators. I feel that is the right thing to do, and I'm excited to get to work. Again, folks, thank you for your support this year. It means the world to me. Uh, I love you all, and here's to an amazing 2024. Have a good new year.